All right. Talk about the sponsor. Hi there. <laughs> uh, welcome back to New to Hill Country. Um, we're here today with Joe Smith. And we're gonna be talking about uh, how Joe used to be a performance, was it performance? Test driver. Performance test driver. It's, it's, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, before we get into that, uh, Kaylee's gonna talk about our sponsors a little bit. The first sponsor is SPG Texas, which is where we are. Uh, it's a premier martial arts gym. We do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for adults and kids. We have a phenomenal uh, kids program called Growing Gorillas. It's growing, ever growing. Um, also adult program taught by phenomenal instructor Michael Hines and Rob Wolf and it's been growing too. Um, I've been enjoying Jiu Jitsu ever since. Um, yeah, it's, you should come check it out. It's a really nice clean facility. A lot of cool people. So our motto is one tribe, one vibe. Um, you'll enjoy the sense of community right here. Mm. Yeah. And uh, Joe's a member of our tribe here. Mm -hmm. so. oh, Absolutely one, love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> One more sponsor. Uh, I'm not wearing the shirt today, but uh, I've got uh, Element. Um, I think we're still the exclusive retailer for the area. Uh, for so, now, at least, yeah. Yeah, for now. I don't think that's going to remain that way. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you haven't tried it, it just makes a very big difference in terms of your hydration, just getting things quenched. It's uh, it's uh, better than water. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. We, we talk about it every week, uh, consume it all the time. Our people in our community just love it. Joe, do you, you, you I do? haven't tried it yet. Oh, you haven't tried yeah, it? Yeah, oh, we got to give you some samples. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, people are just, they love it, they rave about it. Uh, great for, you know, if you're doing sports, great for if you're working outside, but just great in general. I just feel like it tastes good. Yeah, it tastes good. And, like you can try to mix up your own electrolyte mix. It's not impossible. You will not, for one, it's gonna be more work than you expect. And two, it's not gonna taste anything mm. near as good as what they put together. And you won't wanna like mix it into cocktails like all of our gym members do. So <laughs> you can make all kinds of great uh, lo like low carb yeah. Yeah. cocktail type things with it. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, welcome, Joe. Mm -hmm. Thanks for Sorry your time. here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, uh, tell us about your relationship with Hill Country. Like, you you came here when, why, stuff okay, like that. Okay, so uh, we moved here back in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, we were living in San Angelo, mm -hmm. uh, Texas, mm -hmm. out west Texas, mm -hmm. um, and just looking for a change. Mm -hmm. um, we really liked the area. We kind of went and looked at a bunch of different places, like up by Dripping Springs, mm -hmm. and um, you know, looked at schools and all that. And we really liked the Smithson Valley schools. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just kind of we're out one day, found a really unique piece of property, and just we're able to get it. And so Great. here we are. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, and are you from Texas then originally, or where so are you originally from? I'm from Kansas City. Okay, right. Uh, was actually born in Nebraska and then okay. grew up in Kansas City. Okay. But uh, yeah, I moved to Texas back in 2004. Okay. All right. What originally brought you down to Texas? So um, as a as a young kid, I always wanted to drive fast. Uh -huh. Kind of was my motto. Uh huh. And so I um, went to you know, engineering school because I wanted to learn about race cars and engineering race cars. And um, through that, Goodyear is one of our sponsors for our race team. We built mm -hmm. a race car. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, we went to a, a thing that Goodyear put on basically, and I met one of the test drivers and he gave me his business card, you know, and it's mm -hmm. a performance test driver, development okay. engineer. Huh. And so at that point I wanted, that's what I wanted to do. Okay. So I, uh, yeah, as I kind of was getting out of college, I was working in a cubicle mm -hmm. and uh, didn't like it at all. Sure. It was not the life for me. And sure. so I, uh, yeah, found a job at Goodyear and just kind of worked out and that's what brought me. So. Where, let's go back a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Where did you go to school and, and what were you so, studying stuff? So I went to KU, okay. Kansas University, Jayhawks, mm -hmm. uh, and for mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. so, Graduated in two thousand three. Okay, all right. I got my bachelor's from two thousand two. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. When did you graduate high school? Two 
98? Okay. Yeah. You're one year ahead of me. I see. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. So you were, with, with mechanical engineering as a background, were you using that in the test driving as well? So was it, it was a prerequisite to be a mm -hmm. test driver. Um, long ago, they didn't have that, but mm -hmm. as a performance test driver, like you uh, develop tires with engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then like, I would also work with OEMs like Toyota, Chrysler, those kind mm -hmm. of companies. And so you're working with their engineers, mm -hmm. uh, helping select tires and that kind of thing. And so mm -hmm. kind of understanding the, the physics and the engineering around tires and suspension and all that mm -hmm. goes a long way. So mm -hmm. that's, that's why they had engineers. Hey, well, I, I'll full disclosure, I know nothing about cars really, <laughs> like, almost <laughs> embarrassingly so. I don't know how I... I mean, engineering is... And engineering is like a whole level beyond that. that yeah. A lot of people don't know about. Well, I I forgot most of what I was. So. <laughs> I, I I do know how how essentially a combustion engine works. I do understand that part of it. One of the weird things in my job uh, when I was a uh, graduate school professor is I was teaching students how to present, and I was teaching interpreters and translators. So their topics could really just go all over the place what they might interpret, and so. That was kind of how presentations went too. Things could just go all over the place. I just usually put the standard on students like, I don't really care what you do. I just want to feel like I learned something content wise by the end of it. And so like, yeah, I remember a couple students presented on like combustion engines at one point. Like, so I would learn all these really different things from like different fields and stuff like that. And you're only getting like a passing look at it, but it, it was, it was, it was not a bad part of my previous profession actually to, and then she had to learn a little bit of there. everything everywhere mm. did you have to do anything with cars i don't really remember oh uh, yeah definitely but yeah. just like my job was i was a freelancer so one day i would be you know work with engineers and then the mm. next day i work with judges the next mm. day i would work with doctors so mm. i learned to really hold the knowledge in a short period of time and then empty my brain I can have another. Because mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of unique knowledge. words and right. terms and, and all that, yeah, yeah, that you so, have to learn. Right, mm -hmm. so nothing really stays, but I, I acquire the skill of fast learning. Sure, I think that's sure, kinda... sure. But anyway, tell us about the experience as a fast, uh, performance test driver. Mm -hmm. So um, part of that job was uh, so testing tires and sorting tires. So like mm -hmm. the engineers would design five different tires and these are like prototype tires mm. that aren't in production and so you'd have to go and basically you would do noise testing on them mm. which isn't so exciting mm. ride testing which you drive over bumps and you feel like how the tire feels when it hits the bump mm. also not all that exciting <laughs> and, then, and then there was like high speed handling where like you do a lane change at 70 miles an hour mm. as fast as you can like cars sliding sideways mm. have to wear a helmet and uh, basically what you're trying to do is go out and determine what the characteristics are of the tire. Like, mm -hmm. is, it, is it loud? Does it have any resonance mm -hmm. issues? Like, mm -hmm. Does it have a handling problem? Like when you did your lane change, did you spin off the track because it has bad grip or bad, you know, whatever characteristics. And so that's basically mm -hmm. what you do. And you'd go out, you'd go on one set of tires, drive it and every, Every time you went out and drove it, it's the exact same. Like you have a certain, okay. you know, thing that you're doing the exact same time every time. So you go out on one set of tires, come in, people change your tires, and then you write down mm. how that tire performed. And then you go out on the next one and you rate it on a mm. one to 10 scale, quarter point in increments. Do they let you know which tire you're, wear you're driving with or do they keep you blind to try to keep um, you a little more? Yeah, so exactly. like they tell you some things, but like, you know, all that, so like there's benchmark tests where you go out and test completely different tires. Mm -hmm. And then there's like an internal development where you would have, you know, five of the tires and they all look the exact same. Mm -hmm. And there's just very minor details that are different, like different, there's a piece of rubber in the sidewall called an apex. Mm -hmm. So like different apex height mm -hmm. or different okay. width or a different material. And so mm -hmm. like, like we can see sometimes like what they did, but for the most part, it's the same. yeah, we don't really know what they did inside the tire. Looks but like there's so tire. many things in tires that like there's belt angle and that makes a mm. difference and there's different huh. overlay and just all kinds of stuff. And it makes a huge difference. Like 
steering, like some tires, like you can do this and nothing happens, you know, mm -hmm. and then you have a real high performance tire with all the, you know, big apex overlay, all that stuff in it. And like just the littlest motion mm -hmm. like moves the car. So it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's really interesting. Tires are extremely important. Mm -hmm. right. It's basically yeah. what I got out of that. Don't yeah. go cheap on tires. <laughs> like, yeah, do your research, well, get your tires. tires. Right. So. Probably always been on the cheap one. I <laughs> didn't really, <clears throat> I mean, she, we owned a car in Korea, but she, it, I was really, it was re, always yeah, referred right. to as her car, mm -hmm. not our car, because I never drove it. I would just public transit for the last, gosh, about 15 years of my life. I really barely ever drove. It was just bu riding bus, riding the subway, mm -hmm. riding the train and walk and things like that, which I actually really enjoyed. I don't actually dislike driving. It's just in a big city. It's a little stressful. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Driving in a big city is better right. put, I think. Yeah. New York, yeah. Chicago. Anywhere Chicago. you go, it's, yeah, it's, it sucks. Sucks. yeah. It was just really like yeah. It was mm. stressful, just like too much stress added to your day. Mm -hmm. Um, is it dangerous? Like was it dangerous? Um, like that? So I worked there for six years mm -hmm. and I drove nearly every single day mm -hmm. and didn't get hurt at all. Went off the track once because there was a brake problem mm -hmm. and it just no real issues, not like, I said I went off the track once. There was other times that maybe I went off mm -hmm. or didn't go off. I'm not going to admit that I did, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So there were some times where mm -hmm. I was kind of screwing around and might have mm -hmm. gone off. But mm -hmm. yeah, for the most part, no. no. I, I got on two wheels like three times. And okay. The car oh, wow. was about to roll and I was able to make it not roll so um, what was the impetus for that like was that was when you were like doing the lane testing or something or? yeah so uh that sounds like that tire was way off yeah one, one time <laughs> like, it was a vehicle okay. issue okay uh, a vehicle wheel fitment issue huh. where a certain wheel narrowed the track too much and it just made it basically i had to cancel the test i see and yeah we had to find an, another way to test the tires because it okay. was not safe and then another time it was um, something called a tank slapper, which is, it can happen in motorcycles too, but it's when you go from one side to the other and back and forth mm -hmm. and you're sliding back and forth like this. Mm -hmm. and I was in a minivan doing that and I was doing it on purpose, but like one time it caught, mm -hmm. but I was able to get it under what control. What do you do when it goes up? Like, it sounds like you were ready for that. So you I, trained for that or something. So yeah, what is it that you do? It like can that? be, it can be called acid or, uh, yeah assholes and elbows i don't remember how it's how it's good but like yeah. you just yeah. you, you give it everything you got to, okay to you, get just, it under you just write it the other direction as hard yeah. as you can okay uh, so like when a car slides that's probably what i do anyways but yeah when a car slides i like no most new cars don't slide anymore because they have stability mm. controls so like after 2012 all cars oh, have stability see. control huh. and and so they like electronics take care of this mm -hmm. but if it's an older vehicle and it doesn't have the electronics or you haven't turned off, um, when a vehicle slides and say you put in a counter steer to catch it, mm -hmm. it and you catch it, there's when it catches, it comes back the other way mm -hmm. I see. harder. Mm -hmm. And so you have to, you basically slide and then like I've done it thousands of times so I can just, I know what it's gonna do. Mm -hmm. And so it's just putting in that corrective action before it happens I see. to dampen it out. Mm. Okay. So you don't go, yeah. Off. So when those kind of unexpected moments <clears throat> come, like how do you feel? Like you're just like, oh no. Um. Okay. So that probably got my heart rate up. For I the most part, that. like I could drive down the road at mm -hmm. seventy and slide the car sideways, and I had no reaction because mm -hmm. it, it. I've done it so much. Right. Um, nowadays, I haven't done it since 2010. So, um, I still race go karts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and those are pretty twitchy and like they, um, yeah, they can scare you, but like doing it in a car is a different mm -hmm. kind of feeling because you're not, you know, I don't know, expecting it. It's when something happens and you're not expecting it. Right. Sure. Yeah. So you stopped doing that? I did. So yeah. Like in, so 2010, uh, I basically quit mm -hmm. and started doing, started buying up franchises basically mm -hmm. and I I um, yeah I just kind of got tired of going some having to go be somewhere mm -hmm. you know I'm kind of a, uh, I like to I don't know 
be autonomous. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, sure. A little more freedom. Yeah, yeah. Freedom, sure. freedom of time. time. Right, time. Sure. And that's what I, yeah, um, that's what I was trying to do. So. So, what do you do now, and how do you <laughs> schedule? Um, do you achieve that? Autonomy? So I own franchises, um, kind of in Waco, Texas, and then out west Texas in New Mexico. Mm. Um, yeah, and so I just, you know, kind of. I bought my first one when I worked at Goodyear, um, and uh, and then you know bought another one, and then I got basically to where I you know was able to replace the income from Goodyear and buy health insurance, all that stuff, to where I could basically leave that. Mm -hmm. Just kind of, and then over time, you know, you just kind of keep acquiring them. So mm -hmm. that's cool. Yeah. That's why you're able to train. The there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but then there's, you know, when, when, uh, when something's going on or whatever, like you have to drop everything and mm. take care of it, you know, which is, it doesn't happen that often, but some, you know, like this year with Corona and all right, that, yeah. it was, How it was it slightly stressful. Yeah. So. Mm. Slightly, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah was, especially at the beginning, you know, when everything was unknown right. and, and, you know, you didn't, you didn't really want your employees mm. facing, you know, getting sick or anything like right. that. So, you know, we shut everything down and did drop off only type systems. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so it was definitely a stressful mm. thing. I mean, y'all, y'all went to it right. as yeah. well. Yeah, like, I went it. Yeah. At least we didn't have any, we don't have employees. And I think mm. a lot of gyms, SB gyms, put certain scale with many employees. Mm. I'm sure they, they yeah, the was, hardship was harder. Yeah. It's almost kind of luckier that we just started out right. in some sense. Like, like look, at, look at it both ways. Like, yeah. you know, many people say, oh, I feel so bad. You just started, you know, the mm. whole time, like, it happened. Mm. But also, we didn't have a lot to lose. So, yeah. I can look at it the, the mm. other side. Mm. But. And we're fortunate, too, to be in, like, in Texas, it's been much easier than totally. our New Mexico. Mm. Sure. That's oh, you, so you can yeah, see the difference. Yeah, Texas is and, just... Mm. You know, for the most part, they shut down a little bit, right? And then they mm. kind of open right. back up. Mm. But like New Mexico is still like, is it still closed? Yeah, like schools there, they're mm. still only doing, I think, mm. like two days a week or something like that. And yeah, so it's just a lot more. Mm. Yeah, just different states. You know? Right. Yeah, it's such a it's, a, it's almost a different universe when mm. you call someone in a different part of the country yeah, or something. Mm. Like they're just what level of precaution they're taking or like how they view it is this uh super different i've found and yeah. I just, yeah if they came here it'd be they'd be like mm. i did so yeah they would. did it not right right yeah as a non-american i do see it more and more like different states almost feel like different countries yeah. it's a whole continent so yeah kind of like mm. europe you know they're yeah. together but which is kind of cool, like it I, is, yeah. in my opinion, you know, that's that's what creates, you know, if people want certain policies, they can go to that state. Right. If they sure. don't, they can go to it. Like, sure. if it was all just ran by one big central government, we'd all be subject to whatever the rules right, are. So right. it's kind of, it's nice to have that difference, you I know. Agree. I totally agree. It would be hard to, with such a big, it's hard in a big, like, America's just geographically speaking huge. Mm -hmm. Like, that's... That makes the idea of centralizing everything particularly challenging. Yeah, you know, it's just hard to have that kind of overreach versus mm -hmm. like we're in Korea. Like it's just so physically small. You have a lot How of big people. Is Korea, like it's like the which, size of Iowa. Oh, really? Like, size yeah, of England, yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. That's got fifty million people there. Mm -hmm. That's very the size dense. Of England? Really, I didn't even. I thought yeah. England, isn't England bigger? Maybe. I think England's physically larger. Not the UK, yeah. but England, but maybe. Yeah. Bigger. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I. I have, very little attention Don't put this on. <laughs> yeah. I know it's about the size of Iowa because I'm but from it Iowa. It is small, so like, very dense, We're in densely Iowa. populated. Like, Me? Oh, I'm from Dubuque, Iowa. Dubuque? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're from Kansas. I lived in Des Moines Kansas. for a year. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. so, I mean, yeah. huh. I've been in and out of there a little bit, but I don't have much knowledge of Des Moines, really. Usually just, I just was kind of a pass through place for me on my way to. I was going to school in northern Missouri at Truman State, so. Sometimes we go past the point. Usually didn't drive that route, so but yeah. And where's Truman State? Uh Kirksville, Missouri. Okay. It's like super small town, fourteen thousand people. It's actually fantastic. Like mm. I don't know. A lot of people spent a lot of their time at Truman State complaining about how small town it is. Usually because they were coming from like St. Louis or Kansas City or something mm. and 
I don't know. I think it, I, I always feel like everything is just kind of what you make of it, really. Like, if you made the most of Kirksville, it was awesome. Like, we made our own fun. We weren't, you know, we weren't just consumers about everything. We got really active and creative and made things and stuff. And it was fun. You know, it was good years of my life. <laughs> yeah. John Tarpaugh, uh, who we do your training with today, oh, okay. he went to Truman State as well. Really? Yeah, we yeah, went there at the same crazy. time, even. We went there at the same time, man. Yeah, like, he was only there for about three years, I thought. I don't know. It was, we talked about it, I think, on his podcast when he came on. Right. Um, I remember that, yeah. yeah. But yeah, we started at the same exact time and everything. For all I know, we dated the same girls. I, don't, I have no <laughs> idea. You know, like, I, I don't know that we ever met or shared classes or anything. But yeah, we were there. He started in like fall of 98. I was there fall of 98. He was playing football though and stuff, so I don't remember knowing anybody on the football team. Yeah. So that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Did you go from there to straight to Korea or? Uh, no. Um, I the tr the the abroad part of my life began in my graduate school years, also at Truman. I was doing an education degree. And uh, I, I was really fully expecting to be like teaching in a high school. That's what I trained to do. And that's what I thought I would do. And I went and did a teaching internship in Germany, Baumholter, Germany on an American base there. And like everyone had to do a teaching internship for their masters. And I just did it to the Department of Defense. They had a program that came in and talked to us. I was like, oh, that sounds really cool. I'd never been outside the country. Well, I'd, I'd been to Canada, but didn't really feel, didn't feel that different enough to really, like, I've been in Montreal, so it was about as different as Canada gets, but it still didn't really, I liked it, but it didn't, like, feel super, Exotic. yeah, and I wasn't spending, I was more like a meditation thing, but I, I went to Germany for half a year, essentially, traveled all around in Europe for as much as I could, because I still did have a, a job, like, Monday through Friday, and and then, um, yeah, I just had that travel bug after that and came back and a friend of mine just said, hey, like, come to Japan, that's really cool. Like, and kind of offered me a job. I didn't get that job, but the parent company saw my application and, and got me in a different position in a different part of Japan and was there for two years, came back to the States very briefly, didn't really feel like I... I don't know, just wasn't feeling it. That's the bottom line of it. And somebody convinced me I should go abroad again and uh, ended up going to Korea. Thought I'd be there for a year and was there for 13 and a half <laughs> years. Like three years into it, I thought I was done. I was like, three years into it, I think, is when I started working at the graduate school and was like, all right, I, I just landed like my first real job in some sense. And I was like, all right, I'm going to be done in a year though. I'll move on to like Thailand or something. I want to live on a beach or something. And then. I met this lady here mm -hmm. and that changed the course. In that first year you all met? No, it was like three years into my life in okay. Korea. I met her and that really changed the course of, like I was planning to leave at that point and then I met her and was like, oh, I'll stick around. This chick's mm -hmm. pretty hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, see, where, see where this goes. Yeah, marriage and kids. Right. And, you know, I thought I was going to life it in Korea actually. I, thought, I used to call myself a lifer while I was there and then uh, when she course when she changed course basically about not wanting to continue uh, that's where we decided to do something totally different so. and then here we are and then here we are <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Fun times. yeah. Mm -hmm. well let's go back to the the when you how fast have you ever driven I'm curious like what's like max <clears throat> speed you feel like you've ever gotten mm. to so like we didn't do much max speed stuff out there Fair enough. um yeah, I rode in a jet truck one time. Oh, wow. I don't, it went 250 miles an hour or something oh, like that. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And, uh, How did a, it feel to drive that? I, it happened so fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was at a, it was at a, my wife used to work at an airport in San Angelo. And mm -hmm. They had, they had like an uh, air show. Mm -hmm. And some guy was there at the air show. Like they brought him in and he had a jet truck. Mm -hmm. And it's like a Dodge Ram, like, completely got in they put a mm. huge jet engine in mm. and uh and so like i was t chatting with a guy and he's like yeah you want to ride with me tomorrow i was like okay he's like all right we'll bring your suit and so i showed up got my suit on got my helmet on and all that and got in the truck and like he's got this roll cage and like on his side of the truck like he's 
goes around his head, like just super stout, all this stuff. And I've got like one little bar that goes across yeah. my side. <laughs> I was like, hmm, mm. this is a little sketch. And uh, but yeah, he just took off. And, oh, wow. and then they hit, they put out parachutes to slow down. Huh. Oh, wow. Uh, and he's like, yeah, I had to cut, I had to, you know, cut off the engine. I was like, oh, why is that? He's like, because the front started to lift off. And I was like, oh. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's not scary at all. He just about yeah. took off. Huh. Good to know. Oh, wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm sure that I just, that the moment of him having the roll cage and you not having the roll cage. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh -oh. Some like Tarantino movie some years back where the murderer has the roll cage in the car and he kills the people and the passenger or whatever. <laughs> That's what it's immediately what came to mind. I think it was. I feel like it was Kurt Russell was the bad guy in that or whatever, but yeah, I don't remember what the yeah. movie was called. But I yeah. probably wouldn't do that now. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, you just knowing it. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> do you miss it now? Like, kind of driving. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Like, um, so the guys that I used to drive with, um, I still talk to them quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So, like, like when I was leaving, uh, a new guy had just started, and I went part-time I went part-time for like six months before mm. I totally left and uh, so I trained him to kind of replace me and uh, so we me him and another guy all bought the go-karts to the, together mm -hmm. and so like we still get together and oh, we do okay. lap time battles and, okay. oh, wow. and yeah so I still I still get to do it yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it. where do you so, do that like is there a there's a track uh, New Braunfels actually mm -hmm. off of I don't know, two exits down that, that 337 loop. Okay. Uh -huh. So. Huh. We were talking about that. I know where it is. I definitely saw it. I was like, oh, huh. That's mm -hmm. interesting. I'll have to, y'all will have to come out. I want to watch and, you drive. Well, like, y'all have to try driving it. <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay. Because it's like, yeah, it's a completely different experience. Is it? Okay. Ooh. Yeah, so it's a, it's a shifter cart. So six speed. Oh, okay. And the first time I ever, so I raced them back in, like 2011 and then I took a break and then we got them again this last year but uh, the first time I ever went racing after three laps um, I couldn't hold my head up anymore because my neck muscles were fatigued oh, really? and so I remember going down the straightaway and I was just staring up into the sky because I couldn't hold my head down to look oh, wow. forward because oh, it's just yeah it was that fast it pulled one of the corners there it pulled like three and a half G's going around the corner so. wow. Oh. That was. I had to after that weekend. I had to start doing neck exercises. Oh wow! <laughs> so That's some did. pretty serious go karts, though. But I, 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 yeah, they're insane. Yeah. Oh. They're yeah, they're stupid fast. Is there a like a PG version of that there too, or is it? Yeah, all... You just don't push the gas pedal as hard. Mm. Oh, okay, fair enough. That's <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. yeah, there's different versions. Can, like... can you do it with kids, or is it kind of <clears> just all? Yeah, so they have kid carts and all that. I haven't gotten my kids into it. Oh really? I probably will okay like I, I hate that my parents didn't get me into it <laughs> uh yeah i just haven't done it yet but yeah i'm, I'm hearing gym social here as i'm listening <laughs> to all this like go out get the gym members out yes. drive around it sounds like yeah. super fun to mm. me like yeah uh, so can you rent the go-kart at this place no you gotta you have to have bio huh. gc whatever mm. but huh. there are places that have that austin has it mm. okay. k1 racing the I see. Uh, Formula One track has one, huh. and so yeah, there's a lot of Andretti. That new y'all ever been to that in San Antonio? No, we've barely been in. Okay, it's next to Top Golf. They have go karts. Okay. Okay. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. I know I'm picturing your son Cal. Uh, yeah. Crew and Cal. Those two. <laughs> I could. Yeah. I, I can see them instantly loving it. Yes, yeah, so I know. <laughs> They're very active boys, so they are, yeah. 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 Cool. How are you liking jujitsu so far? So it's your oh, first time? Yeah, doing first any time. Martial arts? Yeah, I've never Because your done wife any. Amber did judo. She did judo mm -hmm. like growing up. Her and her brother did it, like they travel, they did mm -hmm. tournaments. Like competitive yeah, super right. competitive. Um <clears throat> and so she hurt her shoulder doing it, um, you know, so she, that's why she's not doing jiu-jitsu with us, because it's, but, um, yeah, 
I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Is your shoulder still like busted up, but has like um, messed up mobility. Or yeah, it's like a, it's a stability thing. So like oh. it, just like any wrong movement can pop it out oh, of the okay. socket. Oh. And so she has to be very cautious with it because it mm. can. She's like, she's done it so much where she, uh, like it'll. She had surgery on it, but it still happens. But like it'll pop out, like dislocate, and she just. She knows how to like Put calm herself in. down oh, and wow. yeah, look at it. Oh boy. Has that happened recently too, or not? Yeah. Oh really? Uh -huh. From what? From what? Just weird things like it's lifting like the or... the first time I ever she ever did it. Uh, she probably loves that I'm talking about this, but uh, <laughs> the first time she ever did it was uh, her first time coming up to Kansas to see my parents, mm -hmm. and we were all jumped in my parents' car and we were going to lunch mm -hmm. and she like just reached up and she was sitting in the back seat she just reached up and just to put her you know because we were all kind of packed in there so she's trying to make space and just popped oh out oh, wow. <laughs> wow. so my parents had to pull over mm. she had to get out on the side of the road all these cars driving by and her arms like this and oh she's oh my god so it finally like she's able to relax and you know because most of the time like um, she she had to go to the hospital one time to get it put back in, and then mm. it's like an ordeal. Like they they give you morphine because it's really mm. painful. They put traction on it, they mm. pull it, and do all this stuff to get it to go, and it's like mm. super painful. Uh -huh. And uh, but for the most part, she's just able to get it, it back. Yeah. Oh wow, mm. that's so yeah. Such a minimal activity it's that looks such a... Sounds really debilitating. Like, yeah, just to worry She's, about. She kind of learned how to manage it. Mm. But, yeah. Mm. Can't no. do jujitsu because of it. Yeah, I don't blame her now that I heard the story. I wouldn't push it. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't. Yeah, she, she did CrossFit one time, and the guy's like, oh, no, it's all good. You know, we'll... Oh, boy. We'll, oh, no. we'll, we'll watch it, and we'll make sure, you know, that you, know, you don't have any issues in her first day going to CrossFit. She had to do some move and it popped out oh. <laughs> like almost immediately. And, and the, luckily there is a, a doctor there that helped her, you know, get it back in. But so what kind of exercise does she do or can she do? She does a lot of exercise. She just has to, it's really like overhead presses and pull-ups and that kind of stuff. You just mm. have to watch. She can jog and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. jujitsu has been fun like I've learned mm. so much and like I don't know like I I uh, wish I would have known this stuff like mm. when I was young like in sure. high school and sure. significantly smaller than everybody else it would have come sure. in handy sure. <laughs> that's what everybody says because like you do you know you, there's always a concern for like soreness and all that it's like wish I'd learned it earlier you know sooner and then we do mm. see younger guys like 18 and they come every day and it's like are you sore like no yeah. It's like, yeah. Like, nothing makes me sore. Yeah. yeah. At eighteen, I don't even remember. Right. I don't remember if I knew what it meant to be sore. <laughs> sore when I was eighteen. Is that possible? Sort of like, yeah. But yeah. still, having said that, you know, jiu jitsu is good for any age, people mm -hmm. of any age, because mm -hmm. it doesn't really require like such a forceful movement. Oh, Kyle loves it. Yeah. And yeah, he just he digs it. That's mm -hmm. so cool. He's yeah. he's learning a lot and. Mm -hmm. Like combined with his own inner kind of innate wrestling spirit there, I think he's thriving. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Be curious. I mean, it'll be really interesting to see him and like when I look at like Cal and my son Lincoln and just you know, Cal's five as well, mm -hmm. right? And it's like they're starting right now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and they're pretty rough. You know what I mean? Like they don't really. Like, when I look at Lauren, who's, like, eight, like, she gets the techniques mm -hmm. much deeper, for sure. But, like, they are already getting conceptually so much. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, what will they look like in a year? You yeah, know what I mean? Like, as age. their coordination increases, they already have the blueprint of, like, what yeah. to do mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, a lot of times what we've emphasized with the kids, too, is, like, Whereas I'm, extra, I'm perhaps exceedingly technical with the adults to the point of like, that was a lot maybe sometimes. Um, with kids, it's like you scale it back to almost nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, and they kind of find the details on their own 
but they're also their bodies are sort of newer and fresher and kind of less you know warped by sitting in chairs and all these things that we've done through and up to adult life so they they find those grooves sort of faster right. and yeah, i'm kind of curious to see like with like a cow and lincoln like man in a year what do these guys look mm -hmm. like and then it's like what do they look like in five years yeah. you know like just yeah the you know i i pity the bullies that want to yes. pick on them <laughs> later you know because it's just going to be like drop to double and put that guy on his back like immediately and mm -hmm. then like just they'll have abilities that they just won't be ready for you know just if you've never trained that like if you've never trained against if you've never gone against someone who's got significant jujitsu training you just you have no idea what you're in for you know it's just it's a whole other world like yeah. i always i've likened it like to you are now going to try to <clears throat> fight someone who can swim in the water in the deep end you know like and you can't swim like you've never learned to swim that person can i mean that's their advantages are that tremendous so like yeah. when i was in montana um i saw a kids class there they've been running for 10 years and the kids class is really big a lot of kids are advanced like yellow belt orange belt and then some of the young kids like doing real jujitsu like they do kind of leadership and mm. free sparring and all that and it's like wow you're so small and how can you move and probably they started at like mm. cal's age and yeah. mm. age. so super players. excited about it's these like... young kids who seem now seem like just running around but actually they are learning a lot and by the time they get bigger mm. they're gonna be huge. yeah That's when i was again. watching for me one of the more uh I mean, I've seen some some people that came up from that kids and stuff. Like, I mean, there's like Stella Davison is like amazing, and, and her judo is incredible. But like, uh, just in the classes, like I was watching the leadership class up there, and there's like a girl who's like 16, probably like an orange belt mm -hmm. or something, and she tapped like all the boys, mm -hmm. like she'd kick all the boys' asses. Like, I mean, they were just like they didn't want to roll with her, so mm -hmm. like they were doing free sparring, and they knew jujitsu. They had some some jujitsu in there, but she was clearly ahead of them had trained longer and just it was like she would take them like with like a smirk on her face like it was like come on, come on. Like, you know like and it was just sort of like it was like and she didn't you wouldn't look at her and think she wasn't big she wasn't imposing she didn't have some crazy physique or something like that she just looked like I mean she's she might have met at 16 maybe 14 or something somewhere 14 16 I think she was in high school but she didn't look like Oh my god or something you know like yeah of course you know because she of course she can roll these boys these boys were bigger than her too and it was just like she would just kind of sit and like just start working from clothes guard and just choke them in like a second basically and they just they would look like oh. it's like your turn and be like oh. they're like they're like oh. like they just knew they were gonna yeah. get beat like yeah so that was like to me that was like oh, that's fascinating right. you know, this, is, this is and these kids and these kids keep in mind are true resistance you know what i mean like th those kids are already know jujitsu yeah. they had belts you know like they've been around for a year or yeah, two you know like she was just three four years ahead of them and it's like if you took her to someone again her age her size there's no no one no one's gonna beat her not unless they just completely catch her like by surprise or something you know and hit her or something mm -hmm. maybe but like in a front confrontation she destroys them every single time like It'll be a, it'll be her, her discretion how badly she hurts that person, mm -hmm. like, which is an amazing feeling. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I forget that because I've been I'm used to rolling with people and I've already shown them all the best things I can do and stuff like that. And then yeah, you get to roll with other people, especially like beginners or something. Like I don't know. You know, I just there's no effort on my end. No, mm -hmm. just kind of like. like <laughs> feel like so like it's like they're moving in slow motion basically uh, from my side but, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah excited for our kids I'm yeah. happy that you're enjoying jiu -jitsu. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. you should see where you'll be in like six months mm -hmm. like it's already a huge difference just in six months like yeah. that's that's yeah completely changed and again you'll be rolling in the gym with people that have some idea of what you're doing mm -hmm. yeah and you just you can't ex like if your friend or something and i don't recommend this kind of thing off a of mat or whatever but I, 
when I was younger, like I would have friends who were like, oh yeah, show me something. Or they try to do something to me or something to see yeah. if I could handle it or something. And it just, it turns around on them so fast and people are just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, you know, like, yeah. they're just like, oh my God. Like, I didn't have any idea that they, they think like you're just fooling around or something like, so yeah, I've, then I had people ask me to choke them and stuff like that too. They're like, I can't be choked. Check this out. And it's that John Frankel video mm -hmm. that we had posted or whatever. It's like, well, okay. Like, and I've had lots of people's eyes almost like bug out of their head and surprise that they're like, oh my God, like that was real. That was real. You know, and it's like, yeah, it's real. Like, yeah. I think what's yeah. interesting about choking is, because I didn't know this until I came to Jiu Jitsu, yeah. but it's about the the veins right. and squeezing the, the yeah and like most people like and i had someone you know talking about this the other day because he was trying to choke his buddy out mm -hmm. and i think it's about crushing the windpipe mm -hmm. right and yeah. uh and that's how i always saw it sure. you know and uh yeah so it's kind of interesting once right. you actually learn choking is not cutting off the windpipe it's not at all the blood yeah. mm -hmm. no, there's a few things that may pain the windpipe or whatever yeah. but like yeah, the main thing is just cutting off the carotid. And yeah. Once blood doesn't go to the brain, those that field of vision just starts ooh, dimming yeah. real quick. And yeah. So this yeah. video of John's, John Frankel, that mm -hmm. we were talking about is this one guy, really well filled, probably he. He's a wrestler. Right. Who was like, oh, I can like hold a choke, or I, you know, you can't choke me. So John's like doing it really slow, really gentle. And then yeah. it takes like how many seconds? Not Five? long like, at all. Like, like he just like the guy's like yeah, he just out. passes right yeah. out. He's out. And then he just wake him up and he woke up. But yeah. it's a quite a quite a scene. It really yeah. is just how calm and mm. peaceful John is. Yeah, there's Not nothing really forceful anything. there yeah. or anything. You don't see his muscles are aren't really all flexed right. or anything. It's almost like his technique smiling. is yeah, all just right. the technique. Like what John said to him is he's like maybe quality of your training partners was not that high like you know the guy was like no no one's ever been able to choke me it's like maybe they don't actually know how to choke right. like that's very possible here like so and the guy's like oh, i don't know and yeah he literally just puts the guy to sleep like, video after this yeah episode. might have to edit that onto there yeah so that's a pretty fun one yeah i mean i've had people just say goofy goofy things to me i had a guy a friend in korea who was like I know how to get out of a triangle choke. And a triangle choke is when you use the legs to trap the arm and the head together and they, they pinch together. And I think you've done the triangle mm, choke, I right? tried to do it on him and I was yeah. struggling. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he was like, I know how to get out of the triangle choke. You just kind of squeeze, there's a pressure point. If you squeeze this pressure point, it'll, it'll open up or whatever. And it's kind of like, I knew it wasn't true, but like, I was like, no. <laughs> like, because if that existed, everybody would do it. Because yeah. the nature of jiu-jitsu is super objective. So, like, I have revised the way I do so many things in jiu-jitsu on the basis of new information and new technique. I constant. It's a constant revision process. SBG is constantly adding new techniques based on, oh, hey, there's a new, better way to do that thing. It's like, oh, awesome, show me. Like, I want the most efficient way to do it. So, well, I was like, all right, let's 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 uh, let's try this out here. <laughs> and I just I threw the legs up on him and I went really slow and just let him, I don't know, he was pushing on like my arm, but it felt like nothing at all. And I was like, Are you trying to tickle me? Yeah, I was sort of like, yeah, that's uh, that's not gonna work. He's like, no, no, just, but see how you can't choke me. I was like, no, but I can. And I just, I, then I just tightened the noose and he was like, wow, like, you know, just, oh my God, I never felt anything like that before. And he'd claimed he had fought people and they had done this and all this stuff. And it's like, sounds like make-believe made-up stories mm. to me like I don't know I don't know where he where who he ever fought or whatever but they didn't yeah. have a triangle choke properly yeah. so yeah yeah no once that smashes together like that I mean I've had people like get me into the dark pretty fast where I started seeing stars I've never gone out I'm pretty smart about tapping so like I'm, I'm not a stubborn person about chokes and I'll just real quick i'd rather tap early and just so if you do go out you're just out uh yeah so I've, i have seen people go out uh so a friend of mine went out once uh, and it was interesting how it happened just the the coach was teaching a rear naked choke and i think she only had one arm in at that point and she stopped to explain a detail or something and then uh he went out like it was some the pressure was mm -hmm. still on and all of a sudden he just kind of 
like the slumped over and uh, we, you know, we kind of set him up and a little smack on the cheek and stuff. And he suddenly his eyes opened up. He kind of didn't really remember what had happened and, but he was fine. That being said, I'm pretty strong with the kids and even with the adults, like it's not a party trick because yeah. um, I would, I would only choke someone in con I would never choke someone unconscious just to see what happens. Like that is a horrible idea. Mm -hmm. There is a really small potential for like medical concern. There's people that might have some sort of condition that may, I mean, you've cut blood flow to the brain. I mean, like you, yeah. you gotta take that kind of seriously, what you've yeah. done to that person. And, um, you know, there are some very slight possibilities of certain medical conditions, but, um, so I would never just go out. There's no value to that whatsoever. When I see fighters do that in like UFC or something, I'm like, and people are like, oh, he's so tough. And it's like, he's so tough, I guess, but like, there's no toughness. Like, he's, he's just going to go out. unconscious. Like, there's, <laughs> yeah. there's nothing else that's going to happen except potentially he could have some health problems. Potentially, he might crap his pants or whatever in front of everybody. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, there's nothing wrong with tapping. Like, all you're going to do is you went to sleep and you wake up later and that's it. I mean, I see guys not tap to, like, arm lock stuff and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, now you're going to get reconstructive you, surgery yeah. on your arm and everything. Oof, like, yeah, there's no benefit in that. There's no benefit. And you know, if you've been doing it that long, you know when it's, like, yeah. when it's gone. Mm -hmm. You know, like... There's stuff that could come on fast in competition, real fast and hard, potentially, but I feel like you know when it's yeah. when it's there, you should. Yeah, when someone's yeah. got that locked in, it's like, yeah. mm, maybe I'm not gonna do yeah. this. Right. I also like that when you teach, you always ask the, someone who's doing a block to go slow. Because mm. I did notice actually like, oh, I feel fine. Oh, no, 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 like right. it comes very fast. Yeah. yeah. So I think in training at least, yeah. you know, we wanna go kind of slow and like that yeah often at the point where you've actually you start feeling it is, created yeah. the tension that would create the break like if you don't if you're not going slow and you apply that part fast like yeah that can be pretty dangerous mm -hmm. and it's really important when you're teaching people like so a lot of white belts or just and I, i've trained with a lot of people who are just like this it's like it's not working so they're like i must have to go harder now. Mm -hmm. and that's the most dangerous thing because like suddenly you're going to find where that key goes in the lock and the amount of pressure behind that's going to be it's going to exceed what you can, can control and yeah. now you're going to like break an arm here or something like that so always going slow with that stuff and because it, it's never power it's never yeah. like that i have to have a ton of power behind it i mean five ten pounds of pressure at maximum you know there has to be some pressure but not not like yeah all my arm bars are very like we're talking like centimeters of movement from my hips, not not uh, not a foot's worth of movement from my yeah. hips. Like mm -hmm. so, the pressure is always in like centimeters in my mind. That's kind of how I remember it. And yeah, a lot of times if you're rolling with buddies and stuff like that, and you're applying a foot's worth of pressure versus centimeters, well, a they probably won't even tap. You you probably will miss because it's such a fine thing. You'll probably miss what needs to be done. And what you'll do is something damaging, but not fight stopping. So like yeah. people will be on the neck and they'll be cranking the neck and they'll be twisting it and hurting the muscles. So that guy will feel it tomorrow, but he might not stop there. Like he'll keep yeah. going basically. His wrists, arms, like all that stuff. So yeah, it's like you're hurting them and it will be damage that they will feel over the next couple of weeks, but adrenaline would carry them straight through that and they would still fight on mm -hmm. basically. So. It's a subtle art. That's why it's the, the soft method. Yeah. That's what the Jew means. Judo, the same thing, the soft way. So like that, it's finding that very, very fine and soft groove in there. That's that's the critical point component. Yeah. yeah. Feels like we're out in the weeds on jujitsu here. So I should probably <laughs> should probably call it here. I think we've all got to run on to some other things. And it's been great having you on, yeah, Joe. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I really enjoyed the hearing about mm. the best. The, the fast driving part. <laughs> the fast and the furious. I want to see you actually driving the real car. Yeah, now I want to like, yeah. and I want to see well, it. Before like, the video, it. Ends. <laughs> I got videos. Oh yeah, we'll see that after awesome, this. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what we should put up on the Instagram. Is like 
something where you're doing like a peel out type yeah, thing or something like that. That'd episode, be yeah, rather than just that. the we always do pictures of people's faces looking wonderful, but like <laughs> be nice to try something a little yeah. different. So yeah. all right. Well, yeah, thank thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Pop this off. Yeah.